Okay. Hi. Kick it out. Okay. Great. Uh, see how I have We're to... We're going to get close. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, the camera's down there. I know. It's uh, a weird camera. Uh, let's go even further. Whew. Is everyone still with us? Uh, I don't know if I okay. am. Okay. Um, so we're going to jump into whys, and what we're talking about today is ambience. Uh, it's like you them? have this whole thing I want to talk about yes. called the Northwest Soundscapes Project, which actually started as a Kickstarter yes. about 100 years ago. Uh, about, and is still ongoing. I, there are probably a good number of my backers who are watching this going, where are my sounds? And I'm I'm going. They're 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 coming. They are still coming. You'll hear some of them today. Hey, um. <laughs> proof. And basically, it was uh, you know, you wanted to create this sound library of mm -hmm. diverse biomes that were accessible to you here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, the Pacific Northwest. You know, when when outsiders think of the Pacific Northwest, they think of uh, rainforests and uh, ocean and rain, and more rain. And ocean, a lot of rain. Um, Some rain, but uh, yeah. you you know that's that's just uh, the left third of Washington, and and Oregon, um, and there's this thing called the Cascade Mountain Range um, that that makes a little spine Heard of it. that separates that left from the right, um, and when you go over the mountains, uh, it is a whole different world of of biomes. Yeah. Um, in one day, you can go through uh, 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 glaciated canyons to desert to rainforest to blizzard. It can be 100 degrees in the desert, sand dune desert, and you know 25 degrees and snowing in the mountains, and then you can drive down through uh, uh, meadowed valleys and then across uh, saltwater sound and into rainforests mm -hmm. um, and then out to the, the hard ocean. And I don't really know many other places where you can do that, mm -hmm. you know, in, inside of an easy day and get out in every single one and walk around. Right. Except the blizzard, you probably don't want to do that. Yeah, no thanks. Well, so take us on a walk today through some of your um, some of sure. your experiences. Uh, we are going to change this over to our hmm. wise focus. Hey! Wait a second. Is it image two? I'm putting this over here. Whoop. No, let's put it right here. Right there. Yeah. Does it blink? No. No, no we Look can't it. read the wise. Oh, can't read yeah. the wise part. Put it over your shirt. Oh. There yeah, perfect. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is live TV. Whoop, whoop. Uh, so we got this WISE project here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to see if we can't start up our Soundwalk ambience here in one of the first locations. Um, is that going through? I'm pretty I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not on the other side, so I can't hear it. Uh... And they're seeing a different Y session, I think. Okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Teasers. Uh, that also changed the sound weirdly. We're panned to the left. Wow. wow. Uh, does it does it go, go with this? I'm fine. How about if we go this way? How about Is that now? better? How are you? Yes. No. No. Does okay. it does it go with the screen? Like if you move no, your, the, the camera window? I'm oh. not sure. Sorry. Oh, two. thank you. Here. Maybe that's better. Uh, okay. Whoa. That this is... This isn't the Untitled Goose game, though. That's a trumpet swan. Wow. Not a goose. <laughs> <laughs> They're different. Uh, no, this is uh, this is this last April uh, at Sinlahaken Valley. Mm -hmm. Um... Sinlahaken Valley is about a four-hour drive from Seattle, uh, and it is a uh, beautiful uh, 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 glacial valley um, that's about a, it's about a quarter mile to half mile deep, and it kind of looks like someone just took a giant trawler and stuck it in the ground and then pulled it 
for about seven miles. Um, and uh, 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 it has steep cliffs on the uh, eastern side. Okay. Um, and uh, not as quite steep cliffs on the western side because that's where all the water comes down from the mountains and so there's a lot more erosion. Um, it is, uh, it's an important stopover for migrating birds, um, uh, songbirds, and as you'll hear, waterfowl. Uh, trumpet swans love to stop there on their way up to the Arctic to go breeding. Um, they get, uh, uh, that was a red and blackbird. Heard it. Red and blackbirds are beautiful, but they're also the assholes of the birding world. Wow! Because if you're out there with a uh, if you're out there with a shotgun mic or a parabola, uh, mm -hmm. parabola, and you're pointing it at a bird, guaranteed a red winged blackbird will jump in front and go, "Hey, <laughs> I'm here too." Um, and it's kind of the field recording photo bomb. Yeah, it is. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, they're actually they're a fun bird to study because they have dialects. Mm -hmm. So uh, every sort of region of the country, even sub regions, um, have distinct vocalizations that the red and black birds will, will make. Um, so except for the Seattle ones, which sound normal. Yeah, exactly. They don't have an accent, not at all. They actually, the Seattle ones sort of sound like they come from everywhere. Oh. Yeah, there's just a little bit there. Uh, yeah. Um, they too just, real. Yeah. Too real. Because they keep getting priced out. Ooh. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, Simla Haken is uh, it's a managed wildlife area by the state. And um, you can imagine uh, uh, in that seven miles, half mile wide, um, it, it gradually goes up in elevation uh, as you head south. Um, so it starts with uh, 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 marshes and, and Connors Lake on um, the north. This is if you go in through the north. Got it, got it. Um, and then it goes up through uh, uh, meadowed fields um, and then into deciduous forest and finally into coniferous forest. Um, uh, all in a relatively short span of time, um, and I love it because it, it because it's it, it's relatively difficult to get to because mm -hmm. um, because there's no direct road to it. Yeah, no matter where you're coming from, you have to go around something and up something and down around something in mm -hmm. order to get in. Um, and uh, uh, it it's a little bit out of the way, so people try not to go to it. Nice. Um, and because it is this very deep uh, uh, valley, mm -hmm. it's also shielded from um, ambient noise outside. So, Got it. you know, uh, it does have the occasional uh, airplane pass over, mm -hmm. um, but when it does, like if it's a, a high altitude jet, instead of hearing that, you know, 10 minutes of with the jet going through, it's, it's just sort of like it appears over the valley goes over the valley and then it disappears. And so what would usually be 10 minutes of, I guess, my recording sucks is now um, like 30 seconds of why I can edit that out. Cool. Cool. And what's the duration that you're usually trying to capture uh, at, let's say you're going through this seven mile um, wilderness, mm -hmm. you know, you're stopping every couple of miles when there's a unique feature, you're doing what, an hour of recording? Uh, I will do that when I'm looking for a place. So, uh, what I really endeavor to do is to find uh, a really interesting area, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of difficult because an area can be interesting during the day, but not at night. And it can be really interesting at night, not during the day. Right. Um, but I like to find a really interesting area uh, and set up camp and stay there for a day or two. Got it. Um, because then you get like the dawn chorus and you get the evening chorus the and you get the, the, the dusk. I really love the transitions. Yeah. Um, and and what is uh, uh, kind of the look is that really the entire twenty four hours is a transition. Yeah. It's one long transition. You know, so after you have your dawn chorus, the dawn chorus is you know when the uh, the sun first peaks uh, over at first light. Um, and all the songbirds start to wake up and uh, 
Up at this latitude, we have a really long first light and a really long dawn chorus, whereas if you're at the equator, it's like 15 minutes. Um, but, you know, the first light starts and all the birds start to wake up and they just, they fill the air uh, with with sound. Um, and uh, all the foliage of their daily life goes mm -hmm. before they before they disperse to go do their daily foraging. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, after that, uh, when they do disperse, you you enter this sort of period of calm where some birds are still around and hanging out, um, but they're they're not as dense as they were before. Got it. Um, and then you when you get around noon. Uh, you know, the the atmosphere has finally warmed up that is changing the pressure density mm -hmm. and you start getting wind. Um, and, you know, wind is often something you, you don't look for in field recordings, but I kind of enjoy it. Um, uh, partly because it tells me what time of day it is, unless there's a weather event going on. Right. Um, and so that wind will, you know, go through during the afternoon where it's really unsettled. And in the evening time, um, you know, the whole process happens in reverse. You know, everyone comes back home to go to roost. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of talking and singing about, hey, our nest is over there, and hey, I, my nest is over here, and I'm all by myself. Anyone want to join me? Um, and uh, uh, everyone starts to go to bed, and you start listening to the whole world die down. But it's not just the whole world dying down. You know, Throughout the day, you've had this uh, slow transition in insects, if you're in a place with a lot of insect noises. Right. You know, from uh, 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 katydids in the earlier afternoon to coneheads a little later on. Um, you intermix with grasshoppers and occasional meadow critic cricket. Um, to when when dust really starts to go, all the the ratchy loud ones start to go quiet, and the crickets really come out. Mm -hmm. Give me um, your best cricket. It's not very good. Better, better. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm I okay, so I'm walk with me that. here. Yeah. Sure. different biome. Yep. So tell us where we are now. Now we're in the Columbia National Wildlife Refuge, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a really big, uh, mostly arid uh, refuge uh, in the middle of Washington. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, on the Columbia Plateau, uh, uh, but an area that's called the Channeled Scablands. Where uh, sounds like a borderlands study location. Well, uh, so you know there there are these things called ice ages, um, and you know where the whole northern <laughs> hemisphere was covered with ice and snow, and cavemen rode mastodons. And Heard of it? Tyrannosaurus. Now Rexus that you froze. mention it, yeah. um, and they had kind of funny movies about them. Um, so anyway. Uh, uh, <laughs> The, uh, during the Ice Ages, um, uh, giant dams of ice would, would build up um, in areas that we now know as Montana and um, southern Canada. And then as things warmed up, they would, they would bust, and huge amounts of water would just pour through. Um, that uh, happened in my bathroom one time when did. the plumbing broke. Yeah. I, so did it, as the water went through, did it like gouge out giant holes? The Think, floor. Thankfully, no. Um, but it, that's what happened. Because that's what happened. Wow. And so uh, it, 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 the, the, you know, the, the geology is still recovering thousands of years later. Mm -hmm. um, it just it looks like it was sand blasted. You know, it, was, it was water blasted. Yeah. For years. Right. Um, and so it has all these little uh, uh, pockets. Um, and I've suddenly forgotten their names, uh, what they're called. Uh, no, no, a placket, I think, of um, a men's shirt no, actually has some placket. Po pocket. Pocket? I also have a yeah. pocket on my men's shirt. Um, but those pockets uh, form, 
form tiny little biomes in and of themselves uh -huh. uh, because they you know some may not have any drainage and they'll be kind of marshy and some will have drainage mm -hmm. and it'll be very arid they make uh homes for coyotes and uh different kinds of marsh birds and speaking of biomes we've got uh we've got a few different sub uh sub yeah. areas within, within yeah in this uh biome so, uh, so let's walk through a couple of them. Right now, we're just in the uh, the, the general bed. Yeah, this is uh, uh, so this is all a twenty five minute recording from uh, the the refuge. Uh, all these sub areas are actually excerpts from this recording, gotcha. but they they illustrate what I find to be so very interesting about the story of a dawn chorus or the mm -hmm. story of a of a soundscape, where you have different kinds of animals ebbing and flowing and coming and going. So, so let's walk through these. We're going to go into the uh, the dis dispersers. Dispersers. That sounds like a kind of monster. Um, which, depending on where we are in the loop, sounds like we might not be hearing. Oh. No, we might not hear them. I didn't time the loop right, but they're in there. I yeah, see. yeah, let's keep uh, them rolling. What's so a dispersers? Um, so dispersers are, uh, you know, some birds, uh, particularly songbirds, don't really roam very far. You know, they may go a few hundred feet from a tree or a shrub. So if you hear these goals, these goals are dispersers. Gotcha. Uh, dispersers are, uh, they're mining, but they're they're generally um, birds that will uh, uh, you know, have an area they roost in, but they get up and they travel a long distance to, to forage and get their food. Gotcha. Great examples of them are, are crows, uh, you know, which crows will have a giant roost for the whole flock, and then they will uh, stage out into uh, farther out roosts, and then after a little while, those roosts break up into smaller stages, and then uh, those break up into smaller gotcha. until they're all on their own, and then they reverse the process at night, and they come back to Group. Mm -hmm. um, goals tend to do the same thing. Gotcha. Uh, and moving on, we've got the songbirds. You know, and so, uh, songbirds. Everyone knows they what sing. songbirds are. Yeah. yeah. Um, Give me your best songbird. Caw, 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 caw. That's, that's more like a crow over here. Well, crows are songbirds. Oh, so yeah. that's where you got me. Crows, a disperser and a songbird. Yeah. Okay, Pro, got it. Crows and ravens are the largest songbirds in, in North America. I think ravens are the largest songbirds in the world. I'm not sure. Gotcha. Um, uh, and then moving on from there, we've got the invaders. invaders. Also uh, NPC type in most games. I yeah. Think. So... And These are the ones with the really sharp teeth, right? Yes, exactly. And they come down uh, generally in spaceships and rays. Uh, you can hear them firing the rays right there, don't you? Um, so that's a, that's a magpie. Um, and invaders are what I call uh, birds that really don't have an area that they go to. They just sort of mob here, and then they mob over here, and mob over here, and they generally annoy everyone. And so when, <laughs> when they enter an area, everyone else just kind of goes, fine, and they go back. They kind of stay out of the way for a little bit until the invaders leave. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, magpies are a great example of that. Wow, that is invading my ear space mm -hmm. right now, absolutely. Uh, so, moving on, we've got pathfinders. Pathfinders. So, um, uh, uh, flocking birds don't just flock in the sky, but they also flock on the ground. So things like quail and uh, um, and peacocks uh, or uh, uh, pheasant um, mm -hmm. are and, and turkeys are flocking birds, even if you know, they do that on the ground. So quail, that's a male quail that's going. I can't go that. You high might have anymore. been a male quail in a past life. That's there we go. Pretty good. Um, so male quail will uh, uh, lead their uh, mostly female flock um, to, you know, wherever it is that they're going to go for feeding or for, you know, for sleeping for the night. Mm -hmm. And so that call is basically the, hey, keep up, I'm moving call that they, that they make. And so I call them pathfinders. Yep. But after that are the followers, so the females will, will be carrying along after that. Gotcha. So this is the 
Got it, got it. Alright, so they're following the path followers following the Follow path, path finders. finders. Yeah. yeah. Both flocking birds. Yeah. Yeah. Well the well the, they're the same bird usually. So that Right. Yeah. They have the leader, the path nice. finder and nice. the path followers. Are yeah, yeah, yeah. That's those but, they're but, on Twitter, right? Yeah. But they usually so the the reason I keep them separate in my mind though is because the the followers aren't right around the leader, but like the finder or leader will go ahead mm. and then call the all clear, and then the followers will work their way across to where he is, right. and then yeah. they kind of hide and stick around there while he goes out and finds a new place. And so we slowly follow him around from zone to zone. Nature, I know that's great. They have personalities and activity and all kinds of stuff. Sounds like they. Also get into accidents. We've got the accidentals here at the end. Accidentals are like whoops, I fell in the pond. No. <laughs> accidentals are when uh, when I've got a long soundscape that I've recorded, and there there's a bird that just kind of comes and goes. Gotcha. You know, like don't ever hear it in the same spot again. So like I hear it one day, and I can go back there for days at a time, and you don't hear it coming back. Gotcha. Um, and so I just call them accidentals. You know, whether it's a wren, like this uh, one that's kind of going that. Um, it's all one bird. Whoa! Easy. Yeah. It's kind of chattery. Many birds are. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, and these are representative of individual biomes in that seven mile stretch. Pockets, even. No, so this th this is a, this is the Columbia National Wildlife Refuge, ah. um, and this is actually just one location. Okay. Within the refuge. Gotcha. Um, I was set up alongside uh, one of the lakes. I don't remember which one. Um, I have that metadata at home. Oh sure. Um, but yeah, so all those segments are they are part of the larger recording that you were listening to ah. first. Excerpted from what would you say twenty four hours of recording. Like seventy-two hours. How many hours of the of this? That, well, that original recording was about two and a half hours. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the tracks that you have in here is a twenty-minute cut down. Gotcha. And then these are cut downs from that. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so we've got these looping. Mm -hmm. uh, we've dropped them into uh, a blend track. We've yep. been just cross fading them based on the time of day full parameter yes, it was exactly. just really it was really just hanging around and i grabbed it to use it um so let's take a step back up to the parent blend track and maybe take a step walking and move. We're, we're gonna walk over the mountains let's go where are we going to the uh to the shelves uh uh leaves? over a river in Ooh, yeah. the forest here we go some water so yeah so we're gonna go through the sound i'm walking through it yeah and then we end up going through forest forest yeah i'm gonna go with leaves on that one okay. uh there's a little road that we walk over to oh uh crystal uh sure crystal crystal, crystal road, road. Yeah, yep. yeah and then back into the leaves or yeah. grass. Let's go grass this time. There we go. Okay, perfect. Here we are. We've arrived. Yep. So, <laughs> tired now. Uh, I know. It's hard work. It's it hard is. work. Uh, so, uh, Bogachiel. Bogachiel or Bogachiel. Mm. I, I wanted to say Bogachiel, mm -hmm. and then I went to Forks and told someone that, uh, 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 I was recording up in Boca Shield, and they said, Boca Shell? Said, you got the inside, okay. the inside right. pronunciation, yes. Boca right? Boca is what I meant. Yeah. Um, well, then I went back to Port Angeles, and, and was talking to someone else, and I said, yeah, and I was recording to Boca Shell. And he went, who's that? <laughs> then you got Boca, side-eyed by Boca a local, Shield. yeah, okay. And he got said, it. Uh, yeah, Boca Shield. Shell? I'm like, okay, Forks, Port Angeles. Um, uh... <laughs> So, um, Bogus Heel is uh, 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 a glacial river, comes down from the Olympic Mountains. Mm -hmm. I think it drains into the Ho, if I remember correctly. Ho Rainforest. The Ho, yep. uh, the Ho River. The Ho River, which is. It, it forms the valley uh, uh -huh. that the Ho Rainforest is based around. Bingo, bingo. So, so the, the Olympics have 
three like really giant rainforests. There's the Ho that everyone knows. Um, that's uh, Gordon Hempton's uh, One Square Inch of Silence uh, gotcha. destination. Um, and it's, it's of the three major rainforests, it's the easiest one to enter. One, because there's a road that goes up pretty far, but it also has a fairly shallow incline mm -hmm. on the path, and so it's, it's, a, it's an easy walk. Got it. Um, and uh, it's also the closest to uh, the major uh, highway entry point for the peninsula. So it's, it's the first one people stop at. Mm -hmm. um, next below that is, I just forgot the name. Um, and this is all in the Olympic Olympic Peninsula, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah, it's on the on the peninsula. So there's another one below that I think is Kilute, uh, which uh, is just is beautiful and lush and uh, dense and relatively easy to hike as the Ho, but you you have to uh, in in most of the year you have to ford a river in order to start the hike. Ah. That proves challenging. Got it. Uh, you ever talking waders or like a kayak yeah, or I've, what are we doing? I've never done it. Waders though. Oh, okay. Um, and then below that uh, uh, is the one I actually really like uh, because it doesn't get as many visitors. I like being away from people. Uh, is the Quinault uh, rainforest mm -hmm. on the Quinault River, um, and it doesn't get as many visitors because it's in the far southwest part of of the park and the peninsula, um, and so it's it's just not an area where people go by all the time. Um, but it's unlike the Ho, which has this nice paved road all the way up to the visitor center. Uh, the Quinault's last 12 miles are all gravel road. And people are like, I don't want to take my Civic up there. Um, <laughs> uh, and to top it off, uh, it's also a really nasty hike gotcha. when you're in. It's it's all switchbacks up and down, really steep. Yeah. Uh, if you, if you make it though, if you can hike it, it you'll be rewarded. It's one of the most beautiful experiences you'll ever have. Um, right. And what so we're hearing is this from... Is, this is from uh, 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 an overlook um, on the Boga Shell. So uh, you can hear a faint, faint, faint distant wash of the river. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, it's down there on the other side of lots of trees. Um, and uh, I like this area because it just it seems to get this really nice blend of um, varied thrushes, which are the ones going. Not enough in here. That. Yeah, and so they. That. And so that that's one bird and just kind of. Steps up and down these these very solemn tones. Mm -hmm. um, so it has a really nice blend of those, and uh, you know, and, it, and it's a very laconic bird. Mm -hmm. um, um, and chatterboxes like the Pacific Wren. So that that really high pitched <laughs> thing that's going on up there mm -hmm. um, it is uh, 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 a handful of Pacific Wrens. And uh, they have one of the most complex songs that you'll ever hear. And, and when we hear it, because I don't know if like we hear on a different time speed than they do, or we perceive things differently in time than they do. Um, when we hear it, it just sounds like this, you know, 10 seconds of Twitters. Uh, but when you slow it down, you can start to hear what they're hearing, and you stretch it out. and. And it's this very dense, but very melodic set of vocals, mm -hmm. uh, vocalizations that are, are just, uh, you can't, it's hard to even imagine that this bird is controlling its uh, syrinx rapidly enough to be able to make this complex song. Right, right. Um, so Pacific wrens are, are one of those so one of those birds where, uh, and, and very thrushes, are those birds where you know you're in a forest. Because um, they're, 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 they're not birds that venture far outside of forests. Um, if they do, it would be on an isolated tree that's not far from a woodsy area. Mm -hmm. um, they like high canopy, high dense canopy, mm -hmm. um, where their song can just kind of reverberate out into the distance. Excellent. Did you start off as a uh, bird aficionado and appreciator? 
in your life? No. Or, uh, I, I, through I, the process of field recording, you've kind of accumulated? So it's it started with uh, Infamous Second Son, ah. um, which, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Second Son was set in Seattle. And uh, Brad and I, because uh, we had Brad Meyer on by then, um, the, the Reverend Dr. Brad, uh, decided that we wanted all of the environmental sounds in the game to actually be uh, uh, as much as possible um, uh, 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 reflective yeah. of Seattle. Yep. Um, and so I thought, well, I'll just go out and record some birds, um, which is, turns out is easier said than done. <laughs> um, they don't like to sit still, and Seattle's kind of a noisy place. I, I seem to remember a story around that time about going to Magnuson Park. Yes. Uh, and capturing some sounds. Yeah, uh, very often off-leash dogs. Um, uh, but yeah. <laughs> um, Magnuson Park uh, on the east side, um, yeah. over near Bellevue, is uh, it's a, it's a large park with some nature areas. Um, it does have a good amount of vehicle intrusion from nearby roads, but uh, enough that it can be filtered out mm -hmm. for you know incorporating bird songs in the game. Mm -hmm. So in Second Sun, although many of the birds are not actually in the kind of biomes that they would be in, um, all of the birds that you hear, uh, whether they are gulls, whether they are, they are marsh wrens, or red winged blackbirds, were all recorded locally. Nice. Just because we could, and it makes us feel better. Yeah. Yeah, well, and speaking of that, let's transition. Here comes 